What's up team? and the rest of YouTube. We're getting into re-entrant corner design. We'll be going through the ASC 716 to make sure that we're covering all code requirements like a professional engineer would. We're gonna have a great little design example that's where we need to determine if a re-entrant corner exists in our structure. And then we're gonna determine through code provisions if that re-entrant corner needs to be designed for any special criteria. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Get your butt in a chair, grab a little popcorn out of the back, tell Jose to get away from you and stop touching you, and let's get going. Determine the following. If a type two re-entrant corner irregularity exists, simple as that, yet as complex as that. Well, first, what is a re-entrant corner? Re-entrant corners are defined as any inside corner that forms an angle of 180 degrees or less. And the problem with this is that buildings with re-entrant corners create high stress concentrations. Although re-entrant geometries can take many different shapes and forms, there's one thing in common, and that relates back to uh, the seismic design of a building that contains a re-entrant corner. And I'll describe this as simply as possible with an example with just my finger. No, I'm not calling the team a loser. Um, but let's take this simple L uh, as our building shape if we're looking in plan view at the building. There's two wings to the building, and typically for L-shaped buildings, a re-entrant corner exists uh, right here where the two legs of the L meet on the inside uh, of that corner. The problem is that both wings of your building, so both stems of the L, move dynamically separate from one another depending on the properties of each one of those wings. Properties of the lateral elements that they have from the diaphragms that they have, or the type of construction that they have, number of lateral elements that each have, and also the geometry of each one of the wings. All of that plays into the factor of determining dynamically how those two wings would move. The worst case is that with this introduced movement of both separate wings, you get what is called, again, a re-entrant corner, where you have a buildup of high stress concentration right at that inside pit. For our case here, I wouldn't necessarily call this an L-shaped building like I kind of gave the example of in the beginning, but we do have, based on the definition of a re-entrant corner, that condition for our structure. It's located right there as I've circled. But what code tells you whether you do and do not have a re-entrant corner present in your structure? And how do they determine that? The quick answer, it's the ASCE 716. So we're gonna jump into there into chapter 12. On page 95, we find ourselves in table 12.3-1, horizontal structural irregularities. Boy, that's a mouthful. Uh, this is everything, as I've mentioned in previous videos, when talking about lateral design. Uh, you have vertical lateral elements, which is something like a shear wall or a braced frame. And then you have your horizontal lateral elements, and those are your diaphragms um, or anything else you're using. So when they talk about horizontal, they're talking about, let's say, for instance, the diaphragm portion of your lateral system. And this table describes all the irregularities that you may have uh, in your diaphragm, depending on how the architect made it look, or how you laid out your building. And you need to check through this list to make sure that you don't have any of these cases present in your building design. We scroll down, we can uh, kind of avoid a lot of this, and we can go straight to type two. So you notice above, they give you type, and you shoot down here to number two. Uh, so this is commonly referred to as a type two irregularity. And boom, right in the definition in bold, re-entrant corner regularity. And then they define, per code, what that means. Um, so you can actually crunch the numbers to determine whether you do or do not have one of these. It's not just a visual thing that you say, oh, my building looks like this, so I ha therefore I have one. You can actually calculate it. Reentric corner regularities uh, is defined to exist where both planned projections of the structure beyond a reentrant corner are greater than 15% of the plan dimension of the structure in the given direction. Okay, from a wording perspective, that sounds pretty messy. Um, but I, I will assure you that uh, from a numbers perspective, it's a lot more clear, um, and you'll, you'll get the hang of it. But before we go, you also want to check a couple other things on, that this table provides. Over here, you have your seismic design category application. Let's say that we have risk category D in this situation. And they also give reference sections, and they say 12334. Let's go check that out and make sure that we're not missing any other additional 
code information that we need to safely design our structure. 12334, we have increases in forces caused by irregularities for seismic design categories D through F. Hypothetically, I said that we have a seismic design category D, so we would fall under this criteria. Having a horizontal structural regularity of type, and they list all the types, there's type two, which is our reentry corner, so that pertains to us, or a vertical structural regularity. So as we get further in this channel, we'll be going over a future vertical structural regularity, um, but that's what that pertains to. Today we're horizontal. Then you need to design for forces determined from your seismic you know, calculations um, shall be increased 25% for the following elements of the seismic force resisting system. And then they list connections of diaphragms to vertical elements uh, and to collectors. And number two, collectors and their connections, including connections to vertical elements of the seismic force resisting system. So in short, if you have a building with one of these irregularities and you're designing in a seismic design category that is high enough, your calculated forces that you're designing your building for will need to be increased by 25% for the design of those components that they've listed. That's it from code mandates. Let's go back and determine if our structure even has one of these friggin' irregularities. And now this problem is starting to make a lot more sense. Type two, reentrant corner. Now we understand where that was derived from and why they're using that type of language. Learning something as we move along through the problem. So we start by defining our geometries beyond our reentrant corners. First, we're gonna start with this section here that extends beyond our circled red reentrant corner and we need to know that dimension. Uh, well, we have four bays at 25 feet each bay, so we now know the distance between D and E, which is the following. Pretty straightforward. Next, you need to determine what the percentage of that distance from your total length of your building is. So 25 feet is past the reentry corner when we're looking you know, this direction along this dashed red wall line. And the total wall line is 100 feet long. That means the percentage of wall line past the reentrant corner is 25 over 100, which is 25%. This is greater than the code maximum of 15% that we determined back in the table in the 716. Now, what about the other direction? The other direction, I'll do dashed blue. We're gonna be looking along this wall line. So we're looking at this chunk of building, and we need to know this dimension past the reentry corner looking in this direction. Well, this is three bays, 20 feet each bay. Gets you 20 feet past the reentry corner. What percentage uh, of the building plan in that direction is past the reentry corner? You simply do the 20 feet over the full uh, length of the building in that direction, 33%, which is also greater than 15%. This is not looking good. Since both projections exceed 15%, that means a structural irregularity of a reentrant corner, so type two reentrant corner, exists in this building plan. Uh, that means that we now need to design our building and any of our components uh, mandated by code for this irregularity. And I know before you go, you might be asking, well, okay, if both of the plan projections exceed 15%, then there is an irregularity. If both do not, then there is not an irregularity. But what if one does and one doesn't? Well, uh, from my understanding of the code, if one of the projections does and one does not, that means that there is still not a structural irregularity. There is no reentrant corner. But correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. Have you run into these before? Let me know down below as well. If you're still looking to burn the midnight oil and get one more practice problem on your belt, check out the rest of the channel. We have plenty of plenty of example problems for you. And if you're really locked in, and I have partnered with the School of PE and have an affiliate link down below. So go check them out and see what they have to offer um, to help benefit your studies and help prepare you more for your upcoming licensing exam. All right, so I've talked about subscribe, comment down below, smash the like button if you haven't already. School of PE, uh, is there anything else? Uh, oh yeah. Remember that it's always okay to be a little nervous when you're learning something new in engineering. Um, but hopefully you can turn those nerves into excitement because you are learning something new and because you're expanding your knowledge. Always remember when you're learning, do it for you. Put in this time, put in this effort, put in this you know, hair pulling out. Uh, make sure you're doing it for you. 
Until next time, this is Rich with Team Kesteva, and I will see everybody next time. Later.